So you tweeted this morning about three straight first-round exits. It's undeniable. It's what's happened since they won the Stanley Cup. We were kind of sold a bill of goods that it was on the coach, that Reardon was inexperienced, so they bring in Peter LaViolette, and they end up in the same spot. If you had to say what the biggest reason is, what is it? The biggest reason, uh, if you're speaking about this playoff defeat, the biggest reason was the Boston Bruins' best players were better than the Capitals' best players. Right. And it wasn't all that close. Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, David Pasternak, they played like superstars, That you know the stars that they are. I think Alex Ovechkin had some flashes. Uh, TJ Oshie put up a few points here or there, but Nicholas Backstrom, Evgeny Kuznetsov, who's, you know, of course, missed the first two games while recovering for COVID for the second time. Um, John Carlson, not not good enough. Not good enough. And I know you guys have heard me say this before, but in the postseason particularly, you could almost rename hockey goalie. I mean, it really is about the play between the fights. And the Bruins had... Tukarask, who was in there for all five games and was steady all five games and made the big saves, made the key stops at the crucial junctures, and the Capitals had three goaltenders, and none of them were, 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 were on his level. And I don't know if that's coaching. Uh, it, 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 does, I don't, it doesn't feel to me like, like this was coaching. I'm not sure it's you know a, a straight comparison You know when you look at what happened the previous couple of years to what happened this year, but I, I can tell you one thing. I, I feel like you can rule coaching out now <laughs> if, mm-hmm. if you're looking at it that way. And now you got to look hard at this roster and decide, is it good enough? Is it good enough? And do the does management need to make some substantive changes to it? Tarek, getting back to the Capitals stars not playing on the level of the Bruins stars, you, you touched on Backstrom. And for him to just have one assist through five games, is it's just shocking to see him not have bigger numbers than that, and he was the guy who really filled the void when you know Ovi was out of the lineup early in the season. You know, you expected more offense from him, and for you, for you to just get one point out of Backstrom in a series is it's almost uh, unfathomable. It, to me, it was it was his worst postseason performance um, since he's been here in Washington. Uh, he's had some great ones, he's had some meh ones, but this was this was, in my opinion, the worst. Um, I mean, it wasn't just the one point. It was the fact he only had nine shots on goal. I mean, like, he wasn't even a threat. Uh, you, you know, one thing about hockey players is they're, everyone's playing through something at the end of the season and in the postseason. Sometimes they'll tell you afterwards, you know, what the injury was. Sometimes they won't. I asked Nicholas directly last night if he was hurting. If other key guys were hurting, he said, I, I, I'm not going to make any excuses. We were out there. Everyone's banged up, and we were playing. So that's not going to be a crutch that we are going to lean on. But to my eyes, he didn't look right. There were some other players who didn't look right. And, you know, if one of the biggest challenges, in my opinion, for, for general manager Brian McClellan, ownership and the coaches here in the next few days, as they chart a path forward, is going to be determining how big of a role did injuries play, how big of a role did the COVID-19 absences play, um, how big of a role did a compressed season that, you know, had a game every other night with very little rest play on the oldest team in the league? And if the answer is, to you know, answer those questions is, uh, it's not that big a role, then you got to make some big changes to the roster. If the, if the answer is, okay, well, we had some bad luck with that kind of stuff, then maybe you can continue to do what you've done over recent, in recent years, which is just kind of tweak around the core and try to make the team better for next year. But that, that's the big choice, in my opinion, is they got to figure out, you know, is, is this – was this an aberration, and do we need to, you know, make a change here, a little tweak there, a little nip and tuck there, or is this, okay, this is not working anymore. We have to move Evgeny Kuznetsov. We've got to, you know, um, make a big move for a goaltender. And I, I feel like, you know, those things are going to be – um, uh, determined here in the next uh, four to six weeks. All right, so I assume, Tark, that they're going to figure something out with Ovi, right? It's almost incomprehensible to think of anything else. So I, I just assume that. Um, but you mm-hmm. mentioned Kuzi. 
you know, who's going to be exposed if you had to guess? I mean, yeah. I can't imagine a scenario where TJ Oshie's not here, but, you know, I mean, maybe he won't be. Um, if you if you had to guess who who played their last game here with the Caps, just give us your best guess. What about a guy like Shara? I mean, how old is he? He played heavy minutes. I believe he's 44. He played heavy minutes <laughs> yeah. for this yeah. team. So, I mean, they're just going to, I mean... Obviously, you want to get younger. They have to get younger, but, I mean, yeah. will they be able to replace him? I, I think you have to. Um, yeah. uh, a couple of things. 44 years old, I thought he played valiantly. Um, I thought he played really good, particularly early in the season. I mean, he was taking down 20-some minutes yeah. the first month of the season. You saw those minutes decline a little bit as the season went on. I think the coaching staff started seeing that, hey, this guy's really good on the penalty kill. He's not quite fast enough, uh, especially in man-to-man, um, you know, for, to play 20 minutes. They start scaling back his minutes a little bit. Um, I do feel like if he's not at the end of the road, it's very close. I, I personally would not want to lean on him for 20 minutes next year at 45 years old. I, I the, the Capitals have been drafting left-shot defensemen for a few years now, it's time to give some of those guys an opportunity. Martin Faravari, Alex Alexiev, at some point those guys have to crack the lineup. You can't just keep them in Hershey the rest of their lives. I mean, you, you spent first-round and second-round draft picks on these guys. At some point you got to give them a place to play. And if, if they can't beat out a 45-year-old, then you pick the wrong player. So <laughs> I always feel like um, uh, that's got to happen there with Chara. You know, in terms of uh, who to protect in the expansion draft, as I wrote this morning for the Athletic, I, I feel like there was probably a list they had a few weeks ago as they were starting to think about it. I think that list might have changed based on what occurred um, over the last nine days. Uh, remember, if, and there's a little bit of kind of gamesmanship going on here. There's, there's a loophole in the CBA. They don't have to protect Alex Ovechkin as long as he's not re-signed. So by um, allowing him to stay a free agent going into the expansion draft, uh, they can actually use that protection spot on another forward because Seattle is not going to be dumb enough to select Alex Ovechkin thinking that he's going to sign a new contract with them. Uh, they did this with T.J. Oshie before the Vegas draft. Um, they know that Alex is staying in Washington. They're not going to use a pick on him. By not, by not protecting him, they can now protect another forward. They can protect seven forwards. To me, that seems like a strategy that they're following. Um, you know, I, I think you protect Backstrom, his nets off, <laughs> Mantha, Wilson, Eller, Cherry, Carlson, Orloff, Schultz. And I, w- I would have said Sam Sonoff. I still think it's Sam Sonoff, but, you know, it's it's less obvious now between Sam Sonoff and Vanacek than it was, you know, a month ago, I think. So, um, You didn't mention Oshi, right? I didn't. I didn't because, look, at some point, this Capitals team has to get younger and faster. They also have to free up cap space um, to, to make some moves. Remember, the, the cap is not going to move up the way it has uh, or the way it had pre-COVID for a little bit until the TV money kicks in. It, it, it's not going to happen right away. Um, they've got to free up some – they've got to create some flexibility by freeing up some cap space. And – I think TJ Oshie means a lot to this team. So that was my projection. I, I don't know exactly what direction uh, the, the, the Capitals are going to go, but they have to lose a big salary somewhere. Could it be Kuznetsov? Could you, could you leave it Kuznetsov exposed and take Oshie and protect Oshie? Okay, well, now you just lost your, your uh, first-line center for, for nothing. You know, I'm using air quotes right now when I say for nothing because you're freeing up $7.8 million in mm-hmm. space, which is not nothing, obviously. Um, so yeah, they, they've got some really tough decisions, um, with regard to, um, you know, who they're going to protect. But in my opinion, I think the biggest question that has to be answered right now is, do we continue to, do you continue to nibble around the edges and put players around Ovechkin and company, or do you go, this is broken. We have to make some bigger changes. And so that's the, the challenge. I think that, um, McClellan and ownership, are, are, are going to face the questions they're going to be asking one another uh, here over the next two or three weeks as they put together their plan uh, going forward. It, it was my feeling all, see, all season long that what happened in this playoff was going to determine the direction of the team. It, you know, that you aren't always at that kind of point in your trajectory where, you know, okay, well, if we get, we get bounced in the first round, it's, it's this. 
If we get to the second round, it's that. If we win the championship, it's that. But where they are in terms of just how old they are, um, how they're up against the salary cap ceiling, I, I do feel like, um, you know, they probably have some different options, and now they're going to have to perhaps act on one of the more aggressive options to, you know, to prop that window open a couple more years.